Hello and welcome viewers of AVG News. My name is Mkoli Singube. Uh, most of you may have already heard uh, about the latest regarding the Palafala, uh, the Palafala Pala issue. Now there is a report uh, from the Section 89 Independent Panel which uh, says that the President, Cyril Ramaphosa, has a case to answer. They believe that the President has a case to answer. And we are joined uh, here by political analyst Dr. Zamogushe Mbanjwa to help unpack the contents of, the res of this report and also give us permutations of what next uh, for both the president and the African National Congress. Doc, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Olisi, um, and also greetings to the viewers and the listeners at home. Thank you for joining us. Can you briefly tell us exactly what it is that, the, in summary, what the report entails? Because some are saying that it's not clear whether he has a case to answer. They say the report says he may have a case to answer, which means he might not have. Can you briefly tell us exactly what this means? Uh, thank you for saying, thank you so much for the question and also for inviting me. Uh, I think the um areas that are very concerning and, and which I think should be our point of departure when we are discussing the outcome uh, of what have transpired yes. uh, on the on the panel that was appointed by the Speaker of, of Parliament, uh, which was chaired by uh, Justice uh, Sandy Lengobo. I think first and foremost, um, we need to have a look at the charges. Yes. The charges that were actually investigated by um, by the panel by the special panel number one charge number one was uh, on a serious violation of the constitution a uh, violation of section 96 um read with section 83 of the constitution now we have to look the, uh, uh, at that particular charge first before um people can get uh, excited about the outcome of uh, this particular panel we need to have a look at the background first and then we can be able to actually um, focus on the recommendation that has been made by uh, by the panel uh, number one is the president uh, I, I will just summarize it as this has been uh, provided yes. by 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 the panel not um, something that i will be inventing new on the basis of the investigation that have taken place Okay. The, pre the, the, the panel said that the president is guilty of serious violation uh, of section 92, subsection 2A of the constitution, which provides that members of the cabinet and deputy ministers may not undertake any other paid work in, uh, in that. Uh, he is in response uh, by Mr. Arthur Fraser, told delegate of the conference of the NC that he is a farmer. So yeah. he's actually admitting by saying that he is a farmer he is actually saying that uh, he runs a business, yes. yet he is the president. And according to Section 98, um, which read with Section 83 of the Constitution, do not allow the cabinet members, um, which includes the ministers and deputy ministers, uh, let alone the president of the country. So he cannot run a business while he is still serving as the president of the country. So that is number one. This is charge number one. Now, if you go to charge number two, and there are so many areas that um, the panel have indicated in yeah. violation of this particular section um, of the constitution of the country. Um, so there are so many areas that they've touched based on, uh, which then is, 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 um, is also provided in consideration of what the response is that has been provided by the president. So it's not a one-sided objective or one-sided view of the panel. But they've compiled this report on the basis of the information provided by the president, provided by those who have actually tabled the motion uh, of um, uh, the motion in the, in the in parliament. So now this is a comprehensive report, which includes uh, the opinions of different stakeholders which might have a direct interest in this particular matter. And if you look at charge number two, it says, yeah, I will not uh, actually go word by word on charge yes, number too, one, long, but yes, I wanted yes. to give you a, a highlight yes, of yes, exactly yes. what is charge number one, uh, what was the mandate of the 
of, of the panel because yes. they were supposed to investigate whether the president is running a business while he is sitting as the president of the country and they've concluded and they've uh, done an, a, a, an investigation and they were able to find some relevant uh, information which is provided yes. on the report. Charge number two was the serious violation of the law, violation of section 34, subsection one of the prevention and combating of corrupt activities. Um, and then it also says that cases must be reported to the South African Police Service. And the president, according to the report, the president has failed to report the theft of his farm to any police official as required by the act. So instead, he actually instructed his um, protection uh, team leader to actually uh, investigate the matter and then to actually look into the matter instead of uh, reporting uh, this particular case to the SAPS. And now this matter was reported to General Wally Rude, who is, uh, who is the member of the protection unit of yeah. uh, of the president. So that alone um, is, a, is a breach of the act or breach of the constitution on the side of the president. Yes. C can I proceed? Yes, 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 you can. We are, we are listening. Okay. So that, that's charge number two. Then charge number three, um, is on the basis of the serious misconduct, violation of section 96, subsection 2B, um, section 83B of the Constitution. Now, this section says the president is guilty of serious misconduct by violating section 96.2, uh, subsection 2B of the Constitution, which provides that members of the cabinet and deputy ministers may not expose themselves to any situation involving the risk of, of a conflict between their official responsibilities and private interest. Um, in that, the President Protection Unit was directed to deal with the security issues in the private farm. Yes. So this one now was not um, uh, supposed to be of the interest of the Protection Unit because yes. this was a private farm of the President, which has nothing to do uh, with the responsibilities of the government, or of, of the president in government, as the president of the country. And they are saying so in other words, this is were used. So in other words, the report is saying, uh, investigating anything at the Palapala farm was unlawfully directed by the president. So the president <laughs> should not have been directing the, the general uh, leader of the protection unit to investigate this uh, this matter. Mm -hmm. And there are points which actually support this uh, argument that has been made by uh, the, 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 the panel that have provided a report. There are three sections in this particular matter. So it tells us that uh, the president should not have addressed this matter in this particular way because it's a breach of the law and the breach of the constitution. Yes. And again, lastly, there's another violation which is charge number four. Uh, we spoke about three, and this is the last uh, charge which has been uh, tasked by the Speaker of the Parliament to the panel to investigate and provide a report. And the panel have, have, have written a report on the basis of this particular charge as well, yes. which also relates to the violation of Section 96, Subsection 2B, uh, which also read the section uh, with Section 83. Yes. Uh, all these uh, sections are actually related to the to the powers of the president and what the president can do and cannot do now this section says the president is guilty of a serious misconduct by evaluation um by, by evaluating section 96 subsection 2b now in this case the report or the finding of uh, the panel uh, states that the president gave an unlawful instruction to General Wally Rode, a member of the uh, of the Presidential Protection Unit, to investigate the burglary the burglary in his private farm. So, in other words, the president was not supposed to instruct uh, the, the the general leader of the Protection Unit to investigate um, this particular matter. So, these are the things. These are the four main uh, components that. Um, the panel was instructed to investigate. 
and then they had a finding they had findings on the basis of this and and, and also on policy what we need to focus on is that the panel is not a court of law yes but the panel was 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 actually uh, given a mandate to investigate or to do a preliminary investigation whether a president have a case to answer or not and then they provided a free uh, 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 an evidence uh, to say a prima facie evidence to say indeed a president have a case to answer and this matter now we have to be uh, tabled uh, in in parliament and then they will have to take this report into consideration on whatever action that they anticipate to take moving forward. And now your, the chapter 16 of the of the report. And again, before I touch base on the recommendations that has been made by this panel, we must also keep in mind that this is volume one yes, of the findings of the report. We still have two more volumes. Okay. This report uh, will be in different three volumes and now we are only uh, discussing volume one volume two will be based on the affidavit and the evidence that has been provided by atm um, mm -hmm. and volume three will be on the basis of the evidence provided by uh, the eff so so we are still awaiting the uh, the volume two and volume three of this particular report but however this particular volume one is the is the roadmap of what to expect because volume one have crucial information which then indicates that indeed the president have a case to answer now when you look at the chapter 16 of the recommendations here is that uh, in light of all the information that has been provided by the panel now the president have a case to answer yes and um, they've listed the areas where the president is expected to provide responses um, in, in parliament and also to, to our judicial uh, agencies that might want to have an interest in this particular matter or uh, whereby a case is placed uh, before a particular judicial uh, officials. Uh, and now the report, the recommendations are saying 264.1 a serious violation of sections 96 subsection 2a which i've read to you which speaks to a uh, different different charges that uh, the panel actually investigated yes. and number two is a serious violation of section 34 1 of uh preca so it also says that the president have to answer on this particular allegation of violation of uh, the trust between the president and, uh, and and the public and the republic of south africa number three the president have to answer on a serious misconduct in that the president violated section 96 subsection 2b remember the first one was subsection 2a this yeah. one is subsection 2b by acting in a way that is inconsistent with his office. So he was, uh, according to the report, he was inconsistent in terms of uh, delegating the authority to the protection unit instead of actually reporting a case to the South African, uh, or to the directorate, to the directorate of the SAPS. But the matter was not reported to them. And the report is clearly indicating that up until today, Yes. Uh, there is no case number in relation to the case of the Palapala uh, case. Now, now, lastly, which is number four, is a serious misconduct in that the president violated section 96, 96 subsection 2B by exposing himself to a situation involving a conflict between his official responsibilities and his private business of the constitution. So again, remember, we have in, I've indicated that the president is not allowed to run a private business while he is still sitting as the president of the republic. So these are the areas where um, the report actually touched base on in volume one. We are still await volume two and volume three. But I think 
this volume one is a guideline which tells us exactly what to expect. In other words, the president have a case to answer and this matter must be taken serious by the parliament of South Africa and this matter must be taken to other uh, judicial agencies that um, are well placed to deal with this particular matter. Yes, thank you for unpicking the report, Doc. Now, based on the history that we have seen with President Jacob Zuma, when it comes to the ANC officials, or let me say MPs in parliament, they have always closed the ranks uh, between their, their leaders. Do you foresee them impeaching the president if that is the next step? Yeah. Well, this time around, we... We await for the outcome of the special NEC meeting of the ANC today. Yes. And I think a concrete response to your question can only be valid after um, the special NEC meeting, which is taking place today. Because if the NEC, um, after the meeting of today, conclude that they are going to support the president, despite this particular report, they are going to defend the president. They are not going to support the impeachment of the president. Then it is something that, will have, that they will have to do um, in parliament. However, that particular position of the ANC or the NEC of the NEC will have a dire impact on the general support of the ANC because people are expecting the NEC to take a decision that should be favorable to them because. They believe that the ANC always say uh, they want corrupt-free leaders, people who are upholding this, uh, the constitution of the country. So if this report clearly indicates that there was a breach of the constitution of the country and the ANC is taking a different direction, which is contrary to this particular report, that will simply means that the ANC will not actually enjoy support from the citizens of the country and from the voters of the country. However, if they decide that the president voluntarily resign or they advise the president to voluntarily resign, it will also give them um, a support from the public because the public will also be able to understand that within the ANC, no one is above the law and no one is above the constitution. So in that sense, they will have um, they will they will enjoy support but i hear what you are saying the nc itself will not want to expose itself to the opposition parties in parliament so in other words they don't want to be seen as people who are actually complying with what the opposition parties in parliament expect because opposition parties will always be opposition parties no matter who is the leader of the nc the opposition parties will always fight with whoever that will be elected to lead the NC. Yeah. So now the NC will not want the opposition parties to win in this argument. Mine, yeah. Perhaps they will find a way um, to actually put this in a public domain as something that is actually presented by the NC, not as something as being presented by the opposition party. They don't want to feel as if they are pressured by the opposition parties because that alone will actually damage the integrity or the trust uh, by the public to the ANC. Okay. So they will have to find a way. Either way, either they, 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 they support the motion or they are against the motion, but they have to find a political way of uh, trying to manage the relations between themselves and the general uh, public. And with the power structures within the ANC and with Ramaphosa seeming to be... Uh, Walting sway in the ANC. Do you foresee the NEC asking him to step down? Uh, it, it's, it's really um, something that you think could happen. But there are so many dynamics currently in the NEC of the ANC. Number one, the timing of this particular uh, report and of these particular charges is, uh, is very vague because the NC is actually preparing for the national conference. Yes. And in 15 days from now, there will be a start of a, a national conference of the ANC. Now, for those who are actually not supporting the president to come back in the second term, 
they will obviously um, advise the president to step down because they have a political interest or political ambitions. Um, and those who are actually in support of the president will clearly try to defend the president. Or even if they are advising the president to step down, they will try to find an alternative candidate. But what is more interesting, policy, about the, what your question, the last question that you have asked is that yes. this report do not only have a dire impact in the current situation uh, in concerning the current president of the ANC and president of the country, it also speaks to the nominations. Because remember, the current president is also nominated by branches and provinces of the ANC to come back as the president in the second term. So that alone tells you that should anything happen now, should the president step down or should the president be advised to step down or should the president be recalled, it will necessarily mean that the president will not be uh, coming back again for the second term because of this particular matter, because of him stepping down because of the same case. So there's no way that uh, he will actually stand uh, as the candidate, uh, as the presidential candidate in the yes. upcoming uh, national conference. But to directly answer your question is, it is not easy now to say the NEC will advise the president to step down or they will recall him because as things stand now in the NEC of the NC, there are different um, uh, views in relation to who must come back, who must be the president, whether Yes, they want the current president to come back, or they want a different candidate. Now you have those who are supporting uh, the former uh, uh, pre, uh, from former minister of health, Dr. Zwelim Kiz. Uh, within the NEC, we have those who are supporting the current president to come back for the second term. So there will be that particular uh, political war between the both factions within the N the NEC of the NC, and I, I I hope they will be able to manage. Uh, there are differences uh, professionally taking into account that uh, the the panel did not uh, actually have any political influence because their investigation was on the basis of the evidence provided to them as the panel. So I, I just hope that they will be able to, to find an amicable way of dealing with this particular matter. Uh, and of course, not putting the political ambitions uh, and on the table when they are dealing with this particular matter. I think after the NEC meeting, however, the NEC meeting will be taking place online according to the report that I've seen. Yes. And um, and I, I do not know uh, whether people will be able to express themselves fully uh, compared to the last NEC meeting where it was physical and things were, were the meeting was very robust. Yes. I'm not sure about the online meeting that will be taking place this evening, a special NEC meeting. Uh, notwithstanding that there are two more volumes of uh, this report coming, let's suppose that the NEC does not force the president to step down. What then should be done? Does it go to parliament? What are the next steps in this uh, saga? Uh, either way, policy, whether the NEC force the president or advise the president to step down, this matter will have to be tabled in parliament. Whether he is still the president of the country or is no longer the president of the country, this matter will be discussed in parliament. Remember, the speaker of parliament is the one who actually um, appointed this yes. particular uh, panel. So the panel will have to report back and the, pres uh, and the parliament will have to discuss uh, the report that has been made by the panel. So whether he's there or he's not there, uh, the report will have to be placed before the parliament to deliberate on and make some recommendations or make some some comments on this particular report. Yes. Uh, is there any chance that you foresee this one being taken to the constitutional court? Uh, maybe if the NEC members of parliament block the opposition from pushing the president out? It's highly possible. I would like to agree with you. It's highly possible. Remember, earlier on, I've indicated that this is volume one. Yes. And we still have volume two and three. And I don't think the panel, this is the panel of the highly respected judges of the country, the cream of the crop. 
So they wouldn't make a mistake by providing um, information that uh, do not have evidence. So whatever that is being reported by the panel is something that is factual. I want to believe so. And on volume two and three, they will also be providing further evidence. So looking at the motion that was, be, was, that was placed by the ATM, I don't see ATM circling for less or, um, or if this matter is not uh, addressed properly by the parliament or by the ANC. I don't see ATM letting it go. I think the ATM will take it up, whether in the constitutional, in, in the constitution court or in any other levels which uh, they think is, is more uh, suitable to deal with this particular matter. But this was the start. And I think uh, based on the information provided by the report and based on the volumes that are still yet to come, I think the ATM will be better placed uh, with more information on what to take next or what steps to take next. But I, I fully agree with you. This matter, if it's not uh, addressed according to uh, the findings of the report and of the motion placed by the ATM, I think it will go to the constitutional court. And do you see uh, any avenues for criminal charges being laid against the president? Of course, of course. If, um, if this report is taken into consideration by the ANC and the parliament, of course, there are charges that will be placed, that will be laid uh, to the president. Because if you look at the four charges that has been investigated yes. by the panel, uh, there, are, there are charges uh, where uh, the judicial system will have interest and will have to investigate. First and foremost, the issue of uh, the money that was found, they will have to investigate. Because also on the report, uh, the, the, the governor have... Um, it's just that um, we need to speak up. We can't, we, we won't have enough time to speak up about the entire report. So, well, I was yeah, just giving you exactly. a summary. Yes. There is a section in the report where the, the, the panel is saying the, the governor have written a letter yes. um, to SARS uh, wanting to know uh, how this money came into the country, whether the yes. formal, the normal processes were followed or not. And according to that report, presented in this particular report, there is no, there is no response. There is no, there is no evidence of the money being, um, uh, the money came to the country through proper channels, yes. whereby a foreign currency must be scrutinized. Uh, there must be an evidence where that money comes from. You know, so there are so many people involved in this particular case. Yes. And it's not a matter of the money found only, but SARS is involved. A South African Reserve Bank is also involved. They might also want to to have um, uh, to, to to lay some charges so that the evidence can come forward and uh, the president can be able to explain himself how did he manage to get that amount of money, uh, uh, whether the money was taken from Reserve Bank, where the money was uh, received through other. Uh, channels or other platforms. Yes, and, and lastly, let's suppose that President Ramaphosa is forced to step down. What do you think is going to happen to the at the ANC conference? Because we are left, as you have said, with just fifteen days. Does his faction have enough time to put somebody else in that position? Uh, it's a it's a very um, unfortunate scenario uh, simply because this is a last minute um, uh, blow to the people that believe that uh, President Ramaphosa was going to do much better uh, in his second term, particularly those who have nominated him and supported him to become the president for the second term because now they will have to go back, remember the nomination processes was conducted through uh, the ANC internal processes where branches were instructed or were advised to make some nominations. Yes. And there is no way that the branches will convene again and nominate a different candidate. 
So what I anticipate will happen uh, in the national conference, should the president be advised and, and, and agree to step down, uh, they will have to find a new candidate on the floor because they've already consolidated their list of candidates. Now, the top five, the top six in particular. So now this simply means that they will have to find a new candidate on the floor because they already know who they want to become the deputy president and in all the other positions. And, and I do not know who exactly they will prefer because in the absence of the current president being a, a candidate of the president position, it means that they'll have to find a new candidate. And it's not going to be an easy task, I must tell you. It's going to be very difficult because among the six people that have been nominated by the same slate which supports uh, the president, they don't agree on a number of candidates. Uh, some uh, agree on the deputy president, but they don't agree on the secretary general. Some agree on the SG, but they don't agree on the deputy president. However, what, what actually united all the slates that have supported uh, Ramaphosa is that they might disagree on the other positions, but on the position of the president, they have all agreed. This is why if you look at uh, the, the, the outcome of the nomination processes, the president is sitting on 2007 uh, uh, numbers of people who yeah. have nominated him or when they were presenting the tally, I think two weeks ago. And it's only him who have the highest. In fact, the person who is actually contesting the presidential position, which is uh, the former minister, is sitting uh, just below 1,000. So if you look at the nomination, the president is ahead of everybody else um, uh, that has been nominated to lead the NC. So this tells you that it will be a very difficult exercise. Of course, they will have to find a candidate, but it's not going to be an easy exercise for the delegates and for the ANC to find a new candidate, especially for the presidential candidate. We wouldn't be where we are today um, policy if the ANC was able to to have a succession plan because yes, yes. Um, this que the question that you're asking me now was going to be in easily answered by saying uh, we have a deputy president of the country who is the deputy president of the NC. Then it's easy. The deputy will just resume duties. He will become yes. the president because the succession debate was done and the succession planning was properly managed. Now, because there's no succession plan, plan and there's no succession debate in the ANC. That is why it's very difficult to actually uh, predict who this particular faction that have supported Ramaphosa, uh, they will support. Should the president uh, be removed or should he resign as the president of the ANC and as the president of the country? Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Doc. We hope to continue uh, tracking the this case and we hope that you'll be available next time as well when we need something from you thank you very much thank you very much brother have a wonderful day thank you ladies and gentlemen that is dr zamogu Lembandwa. he's a political analyst based here in south africa dissecting the report uh, the section 89 report uh, on president Cyril ramaphosa we hope that uh, you're going to understand because there is a lot of uh, opinion out there, but we hope that you are now in the clear. Thank you very much.